YouTube, Phantom Knight is here and it is top tier. What's up, YouTube? Now, I know you only see two torn scales. That's not because two is optimal. I'm working on getting the third. Trying to grind it out before the stream, but two is definitely good. You can definitely play with two. Uh, three is very optimal, but two is definitely good. Uh, we're going to go over the deck list here, and I'm going to tell you, uh, I think this deck is definitely at least tier two, if not tier one. And it's very, very, very strong. We're going to discuss what exactly this skill does to make it ridiculously insane. What's your turn one? And I think this is the best going second deck in the game right now. And I'm going to be real with you. There's no deck in my mind that does go second better than uh, PK does right now. Let's go over the deck list. And yeah, we'll discuss we'll discuss what exactly the skill does as well. Okay. So right away, we have three cloak. Uh, I'm going to go over. Basically, PKs have an effect on field and one in the grave, which you banish from the graveyard generally to trigger the effect. Uh, or summon it from the grave in the case of Torn Scales. So yeah, I'm going to go each of their effects. I'm going to rapidly run through it. Cloak searches when banished. Searches a Phantom Knight card. It has to have the Phantom Knights in its name. Um, and yeah, so this basically searches the Phantom Knights card. And while on the field, you can change it to defense to... Increase the uh, the attack of a dark monster in your field by 600 attack. Uh, gloves does not have uh, gloves' effect on field is when it chooses exceed material. That exceed monster gains a thousand attack. Now be careful because that exceed monster it will be treated as that monster's effect. So if you have like a requiem dragon and then you don't want your opponent to negate you, be very careful with gloves because it can force your opponent's uh, negation out as well. But while in the graveyard, it basically banishes itself, and it's a foolish burial. Now, the new, brand new kid on the block, Torn Scales, is the most broken card in the deck. This card is absolutely cracked. Uh, basically, you discard one card, send one Phantom Knight's card on the field, while well, this is on the field, to the graveyard. And also, if another Phantom Knight card in your graveyard is banished, you could special summon this. So if they DD Crow something out of your grave, well, likely they won't do this. But if you banish any of your Phantom Knights with their effect, you get to summon this for free. This card is absolutely insane with the skill. Really, really broken card. Um, uh, next, we have Silent Boots. Basically, this is special summons itself when you control a Phantom Knight. Absolutely crazy. And while in the grave, banish it. Add one Phantom Knight Spell or Trap. Green deck to your hand. Then we have Stained Greaves, or as I say, the Stained Jeans. Basically, if a Phantom Knight is special summoned to your field, you can special summon this card from your hand. And you can banish Stained Greaves from your graveyard and then special summon a Phantom Knight from your hand. And then you can increase that level by one. Or if you special summon Greaves, it can increase by one. Now, where does this skill get absolutely bonkers? Well, next we're playing three droplet. If you don't have droplet, don't have a heart attack. You don't have to play droplet. Um, one Rota, three Book of Moon, and then one of each of the Phantom Knight Trap. Basically, like I said, effect on field, effect in the grave. In graveyard, they're both monster reborns, but on the field, they uh, both will protect. Uh, for example, wings will protect your monster by destruction or card effect once and give it 500 attack. That is permanent. Um... And then Sword, again, will give it 800 attack and protect it by battle or card effect once on the field. Now, alongside that, we have our two rank up spells. Uh, rank up Magic Launch, you have to have no materials on an exceed, but that's okay. Our skill will make sure that easily occurs. And then you get to rank up into rec uh, Rebellion Dragon. I mean, not Rebellion. Uh, Requiem Dragon with this. Or Ophion, which I will discuss. I know you're going to see a random Ophion this deck and be like, what? Uh, then you have Rank up Magic Launch Force, which... To explain this card, basically, if you have an exceed on the field, you can rank it up. But you rank it up as many ranks up as monsters you banish in the graveyard. So, for example, if you banish two monsters, you could summon a six. Like, if you have a rec uh, Rebellion Dragon, you banish two, it's a six. You banish one, it's a five. You get the idea. Okay, so that's that. Now, what's really, really good about this is the new cards in the extra deck. We have some new kids on the block. Arc Rebellion Exceed Dragon, I said this card was extremely powerful for Duel Links, and I 100% believe it. Um, Arc Rebellion is an, an absolutely ridiculous card. Basically, uh, this card allows you to OTK your opponent at the drop of a hat, no matter what the situation is. So basically, if you don't know what Arc Rebellion does, is Arc Rebellion can detach a material, negate all the effects of all monsters on the field, then gains the original attack of all attack of all the attack monsters of the attack of all monsters on the field, excluding itself. Now this card is absolutely insane. So basically, that's original attack. So what? It, why would it matter? Well, let's say you activate Droplet. Droplet reduces their attack by half. Then you gain the original attack, the full attack of that monster, not the Droplet attack. 
So that's really crazy. And that's a permanent negate of everything on the field, and it also cannot be destroyed by card effects. Arc Rebellion is a completely crazy card. <coughs> then, to add on to crazy cards in the deck, we have Raider's Knight. This card is ridiculous. Basically, you detach one material, special summon one uh, mo uh, from your extra deck, one Phantom Knight, Raid Raptor, Exceed Dragon, Exceed. That is one rank higher or lower than this uh, monster. And then attach that as Exceed material. Now, this is crazy. Why is this crazy? Because this can float in the break sword. So, for example, you can make this and then make another break sword. So let's say, let me let me orchestrate you a play going second. Let's say you make a break sword, right? Then you bring back two Phantom Knights. Well, because break sword's effect, the float is not once per turn. You can make Raider's Knight, overlay it into another break sword, pop, and then resummon two Phantom Knights. This card is ridiculous. Um, we don't have enough extra deck space to summon two. Otherwise, you may want to play two. But this card, even at one, is absolutely insane. You uh, you can get away with one. One is generally fine in the extra, but this card is ridiculous. Uh, on top of that, we have uh, Forbidden... Uh, uh, not Forbidden. We're going over that. Evil Swarm Ophion. So if you don't know what this card does, it is an Evil Swarm boss monster. Generally takes two L or L Swarms. But in the case of Phantom Knights, we can cheat this thing out. Now, while this card exceed, is as exceed material, level 5 monsters cannot be special summoned. So, basically, you go up against Blue Eyes. They can't use Successor Soul. They can't use Ultimate Fusion. They can't summon Alternative. Uh, you go up against TG. They can't make Star Guardian. Be careful. They can still make their uh, Mistbird Colossus and try to negate you or use Droplet or whatever. But this card is ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. If you go up against Shadol, <coughs> no Shadol Fusion. They can't, act, they can't Fusion summon. This is a big problem for them. They have to deal with this first. So, again, really powerful. Now, on top of that, you can also detach a material, add an infestation spell trap to your hand. We're going to be adding Terminus, and I'll go over what this card does right now. So, basically, you target one L Swarm monster and two cards your opponent controls, banish the first target, and return the second to the hand. So, basically, this is like a worse dual wield, but getting it for free, it's really, really good. So, if you know Six Samurai dual wield in that Six Sam meta, then it's that. Rebellion, you've probably seen this card a hundred times. Basically, detach two materials. Uh, then you use the effect, you gain that monster's attack, and then reduce theirs by the same. Now, what's really cool is, the main thing is you're going to be cheating this off the skill. You're almost never going to hard make a rebellion, but it, it, this card is crazy. Uh, three, Breaksword. Breaksword is, a, I, I like this card at three. Going second, Breaksword is very impactful. Um, because you can easily summon three of these. And I kid you not. And the float effect off Breaksword is a soft once per turn. Which I have no idea why, but it just is. So this card is really, really good. Now, the extra deck space is really tight. Some people would like to play Malevolent Sin. Some people would like to play Lavier. But like I said, the extra deck space is really, really tight. So you got to be careful about what exactly you put in here. Okay? So with that being said, uh, keep in mind, we are doing a COG run tonight. So if you do not want to miss that, make sure you are followed to me on Twitch. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Be here. Okay? Around 7, 7.30 p.m. EST. We are going to be going to Cog with PK, so don't miss it. All right, now let me get you into some replays here.
activate. Sartre, I activate. Phantom Knight, the fat I activate. The Phantom Knight, the souls of the fallen rise to fight again. All right. Great souls of fat activate. From my hand.
activate the phantom, I activate my continuous trap. Dragon from the bleak black. Alright! I activate Bringer Break Swords Effect Activates! I activate Phantom Right Wings the Phantom! I activate Phantom the Phantom! The souls of the fallen rise to break! Break Swords Effect Activates! I use one overlay unit to activate Dark Red Williams Effect! Break! Break Swords Effect Activates! The Phantom Effect! I exceed them in my monster! Raider! I use one of Let me end your suffering. No! Okay, so those are the replays. Let me pull myself back up so that way you have full focus on the replays. And get myself back on here. Okay, now let's go back. And I didn't go over the skill, and I also want to teach you the turn one combo the with Ophion. So if you haven't seen conquer. the combo before, and you're like, oh no, I saw that replay, and I'm like, how did you do that? Well, I'm going to teach you. So basically, to go over the skill, which I didn't do, uh, basically, you have three different effects. The first effect is you cannot special summon any monsters with levels except for Phantom Knight monsters. And you can only activate one effect of an Exceed monster during each of your opponent's turn. So if they summon Requiem, they can only activate it once, not twice. Second effect, you can send one monster from your Ander field to the graveyard, then send one Phantom Knight monster from your deck to the graveyard. And set Ra Raider's Unbreakable Mind from outside your deck to the field. So if you didn't know this card, basically... Every time you rank up a Dark Exceed, or if you exceed someone using a Dark Exceed monster as a material, including Raider's Knight, you get to destroy a card in the field. So even if you want to keep this on your field, you can use this as a disruption on your opponent's turn. When you activate your rank up magic to summon like a Requiem on your opponent's turn, you can even keep this set. If you don't want Ophion, that's even a play as well. Um, secondly, this card is really good going second because, again, you could pop it. Uh, at any point, you could send it off a droplet, or if you rank up like a, you know, uh, Dark Rebellion Exceed or make a Raider's Knight, then you can pop another card in the field. So this card is insanely, insanely good going second. So, also you send any monster from your hand or field to the graveyard, that can be a hand trap as well, then send a Phantom Knight from your deck to the graveyard. So, that instantly is like Trees and Phantom, that we get to essentially, you know show off cloak and then just like send any phantom knight to the graveyard so we could send off like our um 
torn scales or gloves or whatever we want to send to the graveyard. Most of the time it's going to be torn scales, but if you open the torn scales, then you're going to send cloak. Uh, third effect, send one dark exceed monster from your field to grave, then play a rebellion dragon from your extra deck and face down defense. This is very broken. A, because you get a rank four for free, and B, this just says, all right, <coughs> all right, you get to revive your break sword with the trap, and then you get to rank it up for free, either on your opponent's turn or your turn. And if you rank it up, yes, you can use Rank Up Magic Launch since you'll have no material. And then that's a free Arc Rebellion Dragon without even having to use Raider's Knight. So Raider's Knight is not the only way you make Arc Rebellion. You can make it by using Rank Up Magic Launch and going right into it. And then negating all your opponent's stuff on the field. So again, like I said, there's a lot of ways around the bush. And it's very, very scary. And you're going to say, but I don't have a Dark Exceeders material. Well, you will because Rank Up Magic Launch attaches itself to the material. So you would detach that. So really, really crazy. Uh, the skill is absolutely nuts. Now, before we end, I don't want this video being an hour long. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to the gate, and I am going to teach you the combo. So if you've not seen the combo, it is very, very easy to do. There's many different lines, which we'll go over on stream. I don't want, I don't want to go over more lines because we'll be here for an hour, and I don't want you guys not to want to watch the video. So I am going to go over this right now. There's also a Prank Kids video coming out as well. I don't think they're top tier at all, but uh, I'll teach you the combo in case we do get a skill and then they can. They're about one card or one skill away from being top tier, so be careful. Be on the lookout for that. Alright, so we'll let him do his thing. Alright, you know not talk. Alright. Pretend we're going first here. Alright. So all you really need is like a 1.5 combo. It's any Phantom Knight plus a card. Uh, you know, it, it's it's pretty much a 1.5 card combo because you can replace Torn Scales for whatever. But in this case, we're going to pretend that I opened up Gloves and Cloak. So just don't even pay attention to the other three cards. Just pay attention to those two cards specifically. I'm going to show you the two card combo. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to activate our skill, revealing the Cloak in hand, and we're going to go ahead and send off the Torn Scales to set our Unbreakable Mind. Then we're going to go ahead and activate our Ancient Cloak. By banishing it from the grave, we can go ahead and search boots. Then we can trigger Torn Scales, Special Summon the Torn Scales, and then we can go ahead and Special Summon the Boots, and then we can activate Torn Scales, send the Gloves, and then we can even dump, we dump a trap here. So we'd send the Gloves, and then we dump a trap. Now, in a case where you don't have Gloves and you have any other Phantom Knight, or whatever, that's okay. You can literally send any other Phantom Knight card to your graveyard as well, and that is completely fine. That will work in the exact same way you need it to work. So if you have another Phantom Knight in hand and you don't have gloves, you could send whatever to the graveyard, and it works in the exact same way in that situation. So we're gonna make Break Sword. The souls of the fallen rise to break. Now you're probably saying, okay, well, how do I pop my Break Sword now? Well, that's gonna be answered here. Next, we're gonna activate the third part of the skill, which is going to allow us to send the Break Sword off and play Rebellion for free. But we're going to summon it in the EMC. Rise up, right. Alright, so next we're going to activate the effect of our Silent Boots. Silent now we already have the other rank up in hand, but if we didn't, we would pretend we don't have this in hand. We would be searching this. Pretend this is not even in hand. We just search this, okay? This could be whatever else you wanted to. Well, it wouldn't be anything, you know. Yeah, this would be end up being something else. But pretend this is not even in the hand. We're just searching this. This is some random tech. Okay. But now that we search this, we can go ahead and activate our trap in the grave. This could be sword. This could be wings. It could be whatever you want it to be. And we're going to revive our break sword. Next, you're going to go ahead and activate rank of magic launch. And then make sure we chain here or have it previously activated our unbreakable mind. Raiders unbreakable mind. Then we're going to go ahead and make our Ophion. And now it's not going to let us pop here because we already have the spell in hand. But if we didn't have the spell in hand, we would pop this. So if this isn't in hand, we pop the trap and then we are able to set our rank of magic. But it will not allow me to do that because we do not have a legit target in the deck, if that makes sense. Okay. But in a case where we do hard open this, then we could just leave Unbreakable Mind on the field. And then in a case like that, then we have a pop on our opponent's turn as well. On top of that, with Unbreakable Mind by ranking up into our, our Requiem Dragon. Now, 
Next, we're going to activate uh, our Ophion effect. Kind of lost track there. We'll be talking. We're going to detach our Brick Sword. And then we're going to search our Infestation Terminus. And then we're going to go ahead and set 1 and set 2. And that being our turn 1. Now again, if we pop this and we have to search this, any other tech, like albeit a droplet, a book, or a chalice, we can go ahead and set that down as well. Now, also, because we started off with this combo and we had a two-card combo, there are lines to go into Levier as well, but we just don't play it because I don't feel like I have the extra deck space for it, and I don't think it's 100% warranted, but you can play it if you want because it does give you substantial advantage. But also allows us... Sorry about my notifications. I think Facebook went off. But um, you also now have... Torn Scales in the Grave, which we could summon on our opponent's turn, because our Rank Up Magic will banish our Break Sword in the Graveyard to Special Summon out our Requiem Dragon. So we can bring back the Torn Scales if wanted, but we may not want to because it'll be banished when it leaves the field. I'll, other than that, we have a Gloves in the Grave, which can send a Cloak or any other trap if we didn't have the second one on our, on our next turn, turn three. Or we could send a Cloak and then search a Boots with that Cloak or another Gloves, then Special Summon back that Torn Scales and do a bunch of other stuff. But... That's basically the warrant of the, the uh, turn one play there. So, we're just going to attack for game in this particular case. If it's turn one, you're obviously not taking for game, but you get what I'm going at. Okay, so if you like this video and you want to see me get King of Games with this deck, make sure you follow me on Twitch. I will teach you the combos if you need me to go over it again. If you want to go on one-on-one -on, -one on Twitch, I got you. Or YouTube, whatever you want. But... I, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Get us to 1.5k subs. Much appreciated. That's the next goal. Love you all. Take care. Peace. Bye, YouTube.